When I designed and built this house a little over three years ago now, we knew that we'd want a lot of light and windows in our dining area here. So we put in all these windows. They give us the light that we wanted. It also gives us the good view of the outside that we wanted. But what we found is that in the summertime, in the late afternoon, we get a lot of heat generated from this area. This is facing west here. There's trees over there, but they don't quite block all the late afternoon sun. We also found that in the wintertime, we get a lot of cold generated from this area. So today I'm gonna to add some smart curtain rods and curtains and see if we can help that out. Stick around. I did a decent amount of research and it seemed to me that the most bang for the buck are these smart curtain rods here that are sold on Amazon by a company called Home Supplier Smart Curtains. Uh, what they do is they sell them in kits uh, and they, the kit works with whatever length windows you're working with within reason. You still have to cut them to adjust. But in my scenario here, one of my windows is about 11 and a half feet long that I'm wanting to cover. Uh, the other one is about eight and a half feet long. So what I had to do was I had to purchase one 13 foot rod set that they sell. I'll cut that down for the 11 and a half foot long window here. And then I also purchased a 10 foot set that I will cut down to work with my eight and a half foot window. So that's what we're going to do today is get these things opened up and see what's in here and what's going to take to get them installed. Okay, as we open it up, um, the first thing that shows up here is the uh, instruction set. I see here is the motor, the Wi-Fi enabled motor. I also see the antenna here, so this antenna's got to be screwed to this motor. That's how it gets connected to your Wi-Fi. So it's not a bad looking motor, it's pretty good size. And then it just snap locks into the rod when you get ready to install it here, I believe. So we have that. We have some rails or runners that ride in the curtain rod itself. There's another set here. I'm sure that what they do is they include whatever number you need for the length of rod that you, you've purchased. We have the mounting brackets here. This can be mounted to the ceiling or to the wall. In my case, I'm gonna be mounting it right to the wall. We have some screws. We have a couple of packs of assorted hardware here. I'm not sure exactly what's in that, but we'll find out here in a minute. We have this box here, which I believe is going to be the remote control. If I can get it open without tearing it up here. So yes, this is a remote control along with a wall bracket to mount your remote control. And then the remote control itself. Pretty good looking remote control. Then we have some joining brackets. I believe these will be used to join the pieces of track together. It looks like there's three of them here, maybe four, I can't tell. Uh, then we got the track ends. Then we have the part that the motor attaches to. And we have a piece of track that looked like it's been configured by them to get down to the size of the window that we're wanting to cover here. I, sm I see smaller piece of uh, rail uh, joined by joining brackets, so I'm sure that's what that's gonna be used for. Then I see three pieces of track here. And then if I lift this out, here is the belt. It's a little toothed belt that will uh, pull the uh, curtain a lot rod, that will pull the curtain along the, uh, the track there. So that's what all's in the box. I gotta give you a word of caution here. If you're working on your uh, dining room table with this, be sure and cover it up with something. Otherwise, your better half may not be too happy. This is the longer of the two windows I'm doing here. And you can uh, configure these curtain rods to either open from the middle or from either end. 
So in my scenario here, I'm gonna be taking these and I'm gonna group the curtains back in this corner over here. So when they open up, they'll open up in this direction. This window will be configured with the curtains opening and sliding back to this direction so they'll group into this corner. Okay, at this point I've taken time to look and read these instructions here. And I have to tell you, they, they are a little bit lacking. Uh, there's nothing in there about configuring the rods to operate from one end. It only tells you how to make them open from the middle. But they did include this sheet here with a QR code on it and a link. I'm going to go check out that link and see if that tells me anything further. Okay, I took the sheet that had the QR code on it along with the app web address. I went to that address. It is basically their website with some help videos on it. Most of those videos are computer animations showing this thing to go together, but there's not anybody talking, so it's a little bit hard to follow along with exactly what they're doing. And there are some videos that's got some people assembling this thing, but again, they're not saying anything, so you just gotta, you gotta kind of interpret what they're doing in your mind. So with that knowledge and what I know here, I'm gonna see if I can put this thing together. Let's make it work. So what I'm gonna wanna have here when I get done with it is I'm gonna want the motor which is this part here to be flush with this side of my trim. I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be in height yet because I don't have the curtains here just yet. But uh, this bracket adds two and three eighths inches to the length of the rod or the track. The track goes into this bracket one inch and then there's an additional two and three eighths that it adds to that length. The, the other end the track also goes into it one inch and it's going to add one and five eighths inch to the length. So what I've got to do is determine what I want the final length of the rod to be and subtract these measurements. It's 135 and one eighth. What I've done here is taken the total length of my area, which is 135 and 1 8 inches, I have it converted to decimal over here, and I've removed the 1 and 5 eighths for the small bracket, the distance of that, and that comes to 133 and a half. Then I removed the distance for the larger bracket, which is 2 and 3 eighths, and that comes up to 131 and 1 eighth. So that's how long I need to cut my metal track is to 131 and 1 eighth. Now then, I have to use all the track that they sent me and configure it the best way I can. Uh, I doubt very seriously I can come up with a way to configure it to where I would wind up with exactly my measurement. So I will definitely have to cut a piece of track to get to the 131 and 1 8. I'm going to try to do this and stay out of the, the view of the camera, but basically I'm taking one of the longer pieces of track and I'm going to slip this coupling over it. Well, they got to back the set screws out, they're in a little bit too far. I'm going to go about half the distance there and I'm going to snug this up. So then I'm going to take another whole piece of track and slide that in there. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to get it all in there, but there it is. And they say in their instructions to make sure these are butted together with no gap in them at all. And then snug this up. Keep it as tight as you possibly can. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another long section of track because that still will put me below the, the length that I need to be. And once I get that done, I'm going to select from this other piece that they sent that has an extra couple of couplings on it. It has some various length uh, tracks. I'll determine once I get it all together what is going to be the best piece of this to use to give me the least amount of waste, even though I don't know what I'll do with it anyways. But I'll be cutting one of these pieces to give me the final length that I was looking for. Okay, I assembled the three longer pieces that comes with the kit here, and I measured it once I had it assembled, and it measures 
118 and one quarter. Uh, I need 131 and one eight, so I take the 118 and a quarter from the 131 and one eight. That tells me that I need a piece of track 12 and 7 eighths inches long. Obviously, it looks like I'm going to have to cut it out of this piece here because none of these are 12 inches long. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to cut me a piece 12 and 7 eighths inches long and put it on the end of my track here. And that should be the exact length that I need. Okay, I took this out to the shop. I uh, clamped it in a vise. What I did is I clamped the end that I would not be using into the vise so I didn't destroy this piece. When you clamp it in there, you don't want to tighten it too tight so that you distort this. Uh, so I used a hacksaw squared it and cut as good as I could, then took a file to it. But if you'll notice, there's still some burrs, what I call burrs in the end here. So you want to take and make sure that the inside of these tracks are really clean. So I'm just going to take a razor knife, and this is aluminum, cut those burrs out. You want to make sure that the inside of this track is in good shape. You know, just going to scrape those inner edges out. And it should be good to go now. So we'll put it on the, uh, the main rod there, the main track, and see if they, we come up with the right length. These can be a little tricky to get on here because they have such a nice fit to them. I'm going to put the uh, factory cut side toward the rail here and put my cut side toward the end uh, terminal on this thing. Set screws are still too snug here. Well, let's see if we can come up to 131 and 1 8. Right on the money. So now that I know, by the time I add the end caps on these things, it'll be the right length. Okay, I didn't get to finish this yesterday, but I hopefully will this morning. Um, first thing we're going to do is get one end of the belt here and we got to clip this cleat onto it and that's going to be used to pull the belt through the track here it's pretty evident how it goes slide on there then this little clip here goes like this all right then that attaches to one of these. So I'm going to put it in like this and stick it in the track here. And I'm going to push this all the way to the other end. Okay, sticking out the other end, then what we're going to do is going to go on the other track over here. But before it does, we've got to feed it through the end device here. Uh, this is going to be my motor end, it's going to be going like that. So I know that my belt has to go into this side here. Push it through there. Now that it comes out the other side, it's cooling up on me. There, I'm gonna pull all the belt through there. So I have a twist in it right there, so I wanna make sure that I untwist it like that. Now then again, I again need to double check that my belt's not twisted. All right, it's gonna go just like that. So I'm gonna take another one of these little cleats and put on there. You gotta kind of think about what you're doing. All right, there's that cleat. It's gonna go in here just like this. We're gonna attach it to one of these rollers. At this point, I don't think it really matters which direction these are facing, but we'll check that here in a second. 
put it in there. Now then we feed this all the way down through there. This is where I'm gonna find out if I've got this thing twisted or not. Don't think I do. All right, now that I have all the uh, belt fed into here, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this thing on there. I'm gonna have to pull the slack out down here. Now this just slides on there. I'm taking the slack out again. All right. Now that we have this on here, I'm gonna flip this whole rod around so I don't have to relocate the camera and everything and there's better light here anyways. Okay, I've got it spun around. Pull it all out one side. I'm gonna put this cleat back on here, or this roller. I do know that when you, the two rollers, there'll be one on each end of the belt. When they come together, they're gonna to need to be facing like this. So that lets you know that this goes on here like this. There we go, like that. I'm gonna make sure the other end's still on there. It is. And now here's the tricky part. I couldn't find anything in their video describing how to determine the length of, of this particular end of the belt here. Um, but I got an idea that I think I know what they're supposed to tell you. And that, in the video, like I said, they didn't tell me anything. But this has to feed through the other idler or pulley. Again, you wanna make sure the belt's not twisted just feed it through there. Now the question is, is how long to make this thing? Now the way I'm gonna determine the length of the belt is this. Um, I know that when this other roller goes on, it's gonna be positioned like that. So I know then that the end of the belt has to come to this joint right here. So if I pull this snug, I know that this has got to go up in there one inch. I can't do it like that. Well, maybe I can actually. Look at this, there's a little trick here. So I can't go ahead and slide this up on there. So now then the tracks all the way up on the, the tracks all the way up into this other roller here. So I can tell now that if this is buddied together, this belt needs to be cut at this line right here. I'll do it this way. So I need to cut the belt at this line. And that way, I'm gonna make sure the belt's kind of pulled snug though before I mark it and cut it. So I'm gonna do that again. So this is what you have. This is in there. In my scenario, I can put that about anywhere. I just want it somewhere closer to the end down here. And I found that you can actually slip this end cap on by allowing the belt to run into this track. They don't tell you any of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on there all the way, pull the slack out of the belt. And again, this cleat when it's in there has gotta wind up together just like that. So I know then that the belt is gonna cut off in line with this end, which is right here. So I'm gonna take and cut it. Now then something else I wanted to see, well, we'll just go ahead and, now. So what we gotta do here is again, put this cleat on. It's gonna go just like so. I'm putting the belt End, to end with the cleat. 
I'm hoping the camera stay in focus for all this. Now then this roller is going to go again, like I said, where they butt together like that. So we'll put this in here, slide this in. Now with those together, see without the cap on, they're not together. But now the caps on there and they're perfectly together. That seems perfect to me. And you can tension them a little bit by sliding these out. Okay, now then that I've got this together here, I'm going to go ahead and secure this end cap here. This is the uh, non-motor end of the track here. So you use one of these things right here that's in the kit. You take it and you might have to loosen the script a little bit, but what it does, it goes down and sits in there just like this and like that. Um, I'm going to put this to the outside when the rail's up this little bump will be on the same side that the curtains is i've got this thing flipped around but this will be on the same side that the curtains are hanging on you can put it two different ways you can put it with that little ear on that side or this side i'm going to put it on the same side as the curtain and then you snug that up And now then, that secures this track and this, this end cap into place here. I'm now going to flip this whole thing around again and show you the other end. Okay, I've got it flipped around now. This is the motor end. I've pulled these two plastic pieces, which is really the end of the belt, down to this end where you can see it easier. We have to join these two pieces together. We do that using one of these. It goes down between them like that. Uh, you're going to be using this. Mine came with the screws already sticking in it, but you have to take those screws out. So this, this is the part that connects to the curtains. You want to turn it with a single hole away from the motor end and on the same side that your curtains are going to be. So that'll be like that. This bracket goes on the opposite side. and You take these screws and you screw into that bracket. So we're tightening, putting all this together basically. This will only line up in one spot. You'll see there's a single hole past that end. Apparently it's supposed to be that way because it won't line up any other way. Okay, there we have that. Okay, next we're going to add these little carriers here. Um, in their book, it says put eight of these per meter. On the internet, the one little video I found says to put seven of these per meter. I'm going to go ahead and put seven per meter here, and I measured this all out. That comes to 26 of these. So we're going to slide 26 of these in now. They go down in this little place here like that, and roll along. There's two. Okay, I have all 26 in there now. Uh, I'm going to put this clip in here. Again, it's this part right here. I'm going to have to loosen it up some. It's too tight to go in there right now. And again, I'm going to put this hook here on the same side of the curtain. So it goes just like this. So I'm going to put just a little bit of tension on the belt. I can pull out on that just a little bit, as you can see here. Just putting a little bit of tension on the belt, and then I'm going to snug this down. Okay. Now we're ready to mount this track to the wall. Here are the brackets that came with it to, to mount it. Let's see what's in here. So there's what we have. Okay, one of the first things I had to determine was how I was going to hang the curtains from these little trolleys here that goes in the track. And depending on the hook you use, that affects, in my mind, how high the curtain will be or how far it will be off of this track. And you have to know that in order to know how high to place this. So I've got all that figured out now. The way this is going to work is, like I said, this is a sample piece of track here. This snaps into it like that. 
This will be against the wall facing down like I have it here. Um, this part here I will use a little later to attach a valance to that will hide the top gap and the very top of the curtain. So the next thing I have to do is to determine where to put these brackets on the wall. Okay, what I did here is I took the brackets and laid them on the track and I spaced them equally. I have the end brackets here about four inches from the uh, end of the track here. So I have them spaced equally down through here and all the way to the end. I also have two lovely assistants now. Hi. This is Lily Ann and that's Lakin. And they're gonna help me. All right. All right, the first place is seven and a half. Okay, Lillian, can you bring me a bracket and two screws, please? Thank you. Okay, I need two more screws and one more bracket, please. Okay, that's got the brackets. Now we'll have to install the track. Okay, it hooks into the outside fixed area first and then clips in. It's really very easy once you get that, once you get it going. All right, there's the track installed. Okay, next we put the motor into place. Um, I'm going to put it to where the cord is near the wall. You can turn it 180 degrees either direction. I'm going to put it with the cord near the wall and the antenna out away from the wall. It indexes up in there. You go up into the uh, little pulley first and then you twist the motor to the right direction. That's what you wind up with. Okay, I just realized something here. These brackets came with it. There's a left and right hand side of this. Maybe you can see that. And I realized I needed it when I saw where the curtain would need to cover this motor. There's no hooks here. You got a hook here and then, of course, the other hooks that's on the trolley here. But this hooks on to this clip right here. Like that. Now then that gives me an end hook to hook the curtain onto right here. So we'll start the curtain right there and work this away. I'll either steam these things, steam the wrinkles out of them, or take them down and press them or something. But we'll definitely have to do something. Okay, I had one extra roller on here. I'm going to leave it on there. That's a pretty good uh, estimate. All right, the next thing I got to do is get the motor going, get it programmed to the remote, and also to my internet Alexa thing. Okay, I finished the first one here. got it functioning properly. Uh, this is how it looks. It's extremely quiet. Just a very slight hum of the motor. And you can stop it at any position. And I'm operating it right now through the app that's on my phone. I'll show you that app here in just a second. Very nice. Okay, this is the motor off of the other unit that I have here. I wanted to show you what you have to go through to set up the remote and everything. Well, the first thing you got to do is put batteries in the remote. It takes triple A's. Then we want to plug in the motor. 
So if you've already put the motor on the rod, you can remove it. So I'm going to plug this in. Now there's a, I've seen some instructions that shows you you've got to go through a setup with a remote. Let's try it right out of the box, see what happens. This pauses it. But this one's already programmed with it, so I'm not going to do anything. If it's not, you take the back off and there's two little reset buttons between the batteries there. You press that and then that resets it. This up here is the channel. So I've got two of them. I've already changed the first one from channel 16 to channel 14. The way you do that is you press and hold these two buttons right here. After a few seconds that starts blinking. Then you can change the channel right there. I'm going to leave it at 16. Okay, that's how you get the remote working on it. Okay, to get the Wi-Fi working, you've got to download an app. I have an Android phone. The app is called TUYA Smart, and the icon looks like that. So I already have my first curtain added here, so we'll see if we can add this second one now. What you got to do here is you click on the plus sign here, and you want to add a device. And you want to go down and go to small appliances. And you want to find uh, curtain, curtain Wi-Fi. Your phone and your network has to be at 2.4 gigahertz. I, mine has both. I had to temporarily disable the 5 gigahertz for this setup. So then you see here, it sees my Wi-Fi, my password, and all that stuff. And it tells you it's got to be on the same thing. I'm going to say carry on. Now we've got to press this reset button on the back right here, which is this little bitty button. And there's a little tiny light. You press that for five seconds and release it. And the light should be blinking. So say next. And the indicator is blinking. I'm going to say it's blinking quickly. This is exactly what I did previously. Even though it's blinking slowly, it appears to me, I said quickly. It's now going out looking for this device. Oh, it's already added it. So everything I did, even though it didn't seem to be exactly right, it is right. So I'll say done. And this is this curtain. I can prove that it's working, but if I move this, the motor should rotate. And it is. So that's working. Now I'm going to go back and edit the name of that curtain. I'm going to call it Small Curtain. And there you have it. So I have both curtains set up now. Big curtain, small curtain. So the big curtain's over there. Click on that. And I can open it or whatever. It's working perfectly. That's how you do it. Okay, that's going to wind up this project. Uh, it went pretty well, particularly when I figured out exactly how things were to go. Um, their instructions are real lacking, even on the internet. But uh, it wasn't too bad. I figured it out. I have everything working on the internet here at my home, so I can access it from my phone. I also have it working um, by the remote controls, so everything's working as it should. This didn't set out to be a review because I wasn't sponsored by these people in any way, but I will say that the quality of these rails are superb. They use really nice extrusions for the track. Um, the belt was really nice. The brackets and mounting hardware was complete. I didn't need any additional hardware at all to uh, install these things. The motors are really nice. Uh, only time will tell how long they will last. But if I had to give this a uh, rating from, on a scale from one to 10, it would definitely be a 10. So anyway, like I said, that sums up this project. If you liked anything you saw here, if it was helpful to you in any way, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit that like button. Uh, I'm a new YouTuber and every subscription helps. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, thanks again.